Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining me today. Tosh, and thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. So I've been very curious about what I've seen you doing on your internet presence and really want to dive into that today and understand you better and what you're up to. And um, as is typical for this show, I would love to just start by hearing from you about your background and your story and just anything that you feel like you want to share. And you can take as long as you like uh, just to share whatever you feel is relevant. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. The uh, my background. I mean, I'm a an upper middle class white male. Grew up in the Bay Area in California to upper middle class parents. Um, worked hard at school through elementary, middle, and high school. Um, played sports. Uh, went to UCLA. Ended up studying sociology. Um, from then went into like marketing and communications in the nonprofit space and then into advertising very heavy on the social media. You know, this kind of like started around 2010 when social media was like getting pretty big and off the ground. Um, and yeah, so I, I was in California for a while. I was in the Midwest for two and a half years. I was in New York for two and a half years. And I've been back in the Bay Area for about five or six years. Was living in San Francisco um, for like five years up until last year. Um, but I mean, really my, my, my background, I mean, I, I became interested in consciousness and philosophy pretty young. Um, and then had my first psychedelic experience in 2008 when I was a senior in college and kind of like ramping up to start job searching. And I don't know. And then in like 2013, I like discovered literary Twitter. And really since then, it's like my job was always in the way of reading and writing. Um, started writing in like word documents in like 2008 and then kind of more in like the notes app on my phone, which I could then pull up on my laptop in like 2013. And since then, I mean, it, it's, it's been kind of like a constant, like writing my thoughts down or reading and really like curating my, my reading list. And it's in the last few years uh, moved a lot from like, the tech and VC world toward like the indie literature writers and artists and activists and kind of philosophers, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, I'm sort of like very bored of like the status games of like business and, you know, um, credit to those who are in like the engineering and design and software world. But I think the real work is the heart and the mind and the voice and listening and being a good ancestor, being a good citizen, being a good friend, um, being humble, having courage and like figuring out what those words mean. Um, I've kind of made that my day job. And, you know, by that, I mean, I don't, you know, make a living doing it. I don't really make a living. I'm kind of living with family and on borrowed money, which can't last um but because yeah i mean i'm also kind of critical of like people trying to like self-actualize for a living and call it coaching and call it here's my ebook it's like no like we're all we're all thrashing in the self and i don't want your fucking course sorry am i allowed to swear sure go for it yeah like I, i'm sort of skeptical of the whole game of like the online thought bro um of which you know you and i are both one so it's like you can't yeah it's like i'm i don't know i'm very self-critical and i'm critical of the whole enterprise of writing online even though that's i think it's the way out so anyway there's my messy answer thanks for listening uh -huh. can you say more about what you mean by the way out mm. hmm well, I'm trying to make awareness not a problem. And I feel like it's a daily challenge. Um, I don't know. I mean, when I think about what kind of worker am I, what, what service do I do when I sort of try to 
get to the center of my being and then write and speak from there and through that transform into a new kind of person. It's like, I just keep believing that if I do that in public, uh, I will somehow, you know, again, it's not about bringing in money per se, but um, I'll find a way to keep going. Um, so yeah, I'm sort of like developing the faith, you know? And like, I think that's what they mean when they say, you know, you like, you got to jump off and grow the wings on the way down. Um, you just have to do what fascinates you and follow your interests and follow your obsession. And if you do that, you just have to let everything else fall away. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of find myself more and more separated from my peers. Um, you know, I'll be 35 in October and, you know, a lot of them are senior director of this product manager of that at X mildly well-known company. And they've got wife and house and kids and they became our parents. And a lot of people do that. And, um, my worries are different than theirs because I read their newsletters and it's like, I don't know, seems very much like five, seven years ago to me, stuff I was dealing with when I was 24 or 26. And yeah, I don't know, the spiritual life looks different. And it's like spirituality is like my main gig, I guess you could say. Um, so Yeah, there's a lot there to dive into that I suspect we'll circle back to. Um, I thought um, that we could maybe start after this by talking about how I became aware of you. And a little while ago, I posted a thread uh, that I'll read and then talk about how that connected us and just kind of throw that on the table so that it's available to us. Um, so this is what the thread said. Uh, write a journal entry in your friend's DMs. That's direct mm -hmm. messages. Mm -hmm. Add all the tedious details and emotional texture and unresolved questions and plot holes and narrative mm -hmm. cliffhangers and poetic twists and turns. Mm -hmm. The two of you can sort it out later. Since make together, try me. And then uh, our mutual acquaintance, Jimmy, said, this is Jeff's specialty. And then... <laughs> Uh, you replied, man, I've written so many books to people. I reread them all the time and always find something to add to someone else's. I'll just be here weaving my net. And you had another reply, but I've allied at that for now. Mm -hmm. um, can you, yeah, I think I want to, that's sort of like available to us and we might circle mm -hmm. back to that as well. But can you say, given that context, like what it is that you are doing on the internet as you understand it? Yeah, so I think when I post in public, and again, this goes up until this very hour, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been I've been posting what feels like radical thoughts on on Twitter for eight years now, and it's like still it's it's a fascinating thing. So like when I write in public, I'm not sure who I do it for. I do it for me, and I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, uh, you know, some people call it shadow work. You know, I sort of like that that phrase of like fighting who you think is there. I'm like kind of like I'm fighting with the voice in my head. That's kind of like what I do in public. Like when I'm writing, uh, when I retweet, you know, I'm it's a very careful show I put on. I mean, all I mean, really all of my effort and all of my my skills and expertise goes toward what I do on Twitter. And it is a mix of, I mean, it's, it's the arts, because I think the arts are the only way out of self-awareness. Um, so, I mean, so yeah, and I can try to explain more what I do in public and maybe I'll get there. Um, but in, in private, in direct messages, you know, whenever I sense, it's like with each person that I, I know about, there's like a common language and um, I'll write to them. And I also have a sense of where I think they're at and what I think they could use. Like I sort of see myself as like, 
either like an offensive coordinator in like American football or some other kind of like position player in sports where it's like, I see you because I see what you're doing in public. So I can understand what it's like to be inside your head and your body, like, you know, having your feed coming at you, you know, both information and real life. And like, I just like throw you bounce passes or like, like whisper something in your ear. So I feel like that's a lot of like what I do um, is having a sense of where others are at. And I'm always like reading for them. Um, stuff I put in, in public is like practice, but it's also like me sharpening my own ax, right? Like, I don't know if what I write is really like a product. Um, I think it's, it's practice for me to stay in the game of being able to, to understand other people's writing. Um, Cause yeah, I write a lot. I mean, I've written thousands of pages and I've been over it a lot, but I, I keep losing interest in what I've done. Um, and yeah, I, I see myself as a curator and I'm one of the many creators out there doing stuff. And uh, I don't always like my work. Um, I appreciate myself and what I do, but when it comes to actually like using it, only a small bit of it is useful. Um, and I think I'm a much better writer than I am a reader. I've not, I haven't really tried being an editor for others too much in a while. I think I could probably be really good at that. Um, but I also probably could use an editor and use, use someone who knows and understands how I see things and wants to help me get better. And I've never had that. I've never really asked for it. I've kind of waited for it and it hasn't come. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I keep being surprised by the writing life. And it's like how much longer you can wait and how much longer you can do without success. Because um, really all you actually need is, is time and you have to take it. It's right there and you have to take it. Um, and it's never going to be given to you. No one's going to go out of their way to coddle you and make sure you're comfortable enough for the genius to come. It's like, no, if you're given the time, you squander it. Um, it's like, I think writing only happens if it's impossible. It only happens if there's no way to do it. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've been living an impossible life for three years. Never for one second has it been possible on paper. Yet here I am. Um, because I let everything else fall away. Having access to the voice is everything. And I've given up whatever I had to give up in order to stay with it. Um, so far, so good, I think. But, you know, we'll see. Life gets harder as it goes on. Hmm. Um, yeah. There's a lot in here as well. And just like, everything you're saying there's just like a lot i could ask you about so i'm gonna feel free, yeah and like feel free to stop me and like mm -hmm. like pull on one thread and like push back because yeah like mm -hmm. i can kind of like go and go mm -hmm. and like yeah like like let's kind of like treat this like we're like building a sandcastle together of like what i can put here and what you can put here mm -hmm. and like we both shape it so yeah feel free to like guide me mm -hmm. and edit me and like take control if you want and we can see how that goes uh-huh yeah, I think um, maybe just to keep it like as simple as possible to start, what I'm hearing is like there's you, you, you write and you read and sometimes it's in public and sometimes it's in private and this is uh, a spiritual activity for you. Is that is that a fair, like very simplistic starting point? Yeah, I mean, it's it's spiritual, it's social, it's professional it's um you know i mean like it's work it's therapy it's my pastime it's my diversion um yeah it's it's sort of all those things um because yeah it's like once you start yeah like i mean we could talk forever about the difference between reading and thinking and writing and speaking um but i feel like those are like the tools and it's kind of like keep bouncing around 
Um, it's like, I'm always doing it. Mm -hmm. What Um, were some of the milestones along the way of like, you said you started writing in word documents in like 2008 or something like that. And then it was notes app and so on, but what were some of the like more, um, uh, like historical, personal, autobiographical milestones of like this endeavor for you? Yeah. Um, I think it was December 20, either 13 or 14, when I was, I had flown home to California from New York for Christmas. And then I was on the flight back. And at that point, I had like written a lot in my, um, my notes. And like, I would get to the point where the one I was working on started like, like lagging and going slow because there was like so much in there. So I had to start a new one. So I got to having done 61 of those. So that's probably like a 2,700 page thing. Um, And I decided to number them all and say, you know what, like, I'm going to make this something. Um, Then I think that was a big one. Um, Another big one was May 2014 when I submitted a manuscript to an editor, uh, an editor who helped someone, my old boss, uh, publish what became a New York Times bestseller. And so that was like getting some like real good professional world-class eyes on my work. And I, I got some, some interesting feedback, some, some encouraging feedback and some humbling feedback of a lot of this is really good and interesting. And you've got a really interesting way of, of saying things. And if you keep working on this, you could position yourself as an important voice of your generation. And I can't tell who you are, where you come from, why I'm reading this, why we should listen to you. Um, it's totally mixed up with your half thoughts about articles you've read and the beginning of articulating little like moments of real life, but then you kind of like, you know, tailspin off into philosophizing about something and then you stop and then you start somewhere else and it's a very choppy reading experience and you're going to lose almost everybody. Uh, and I think both of those were valid and, um, but I took the good from the bad and kept working on it. And I mean, really things have not changed since, um, what else? I, I mean, I think starting Substack and Patreon, which I did, I think early last year were, were sort of big milestones. Um, you know, I, I never really had a place where people could pay to support what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I mean, like the discovery of like Linktree, you know, like so I can say, you know, here, here are all, here are all the platforms, right? Like if you were going to read me from top to bottom, it's like, here's how it would go. So, I mean, pretty much that's like, that's my book, right? Is, you know, all the posts I've done on each of those, those platforms, because like they're each a different work of art and they each have a, 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 a unique voice. Um, so, so when yeah. did you start um, like treating direct messages as kind of correspondences in the way mm. that you're describing? Maybe not until like 2019, mm-hmm. um, but like there are some that go back to 2017 or 2014 with certain people. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, it was probably like, 2019 I, I I'd say I like got through a large volume of work and just like you know you just got to like spend a lot of time making bad 100 page documents and just like keep reading more stuff so I feel like that's what like 2015 through 2018 was um and then yeah then I sort of like lost the fear and I don't and I stopped it's almost like anxiety fell away and it's like, I've learned that I can't make a mistake. And then if it feels right, just write it and put it there. And it's like, I'm not afraid of judgment. I'm not afraid of 
uh, reception. Um, and I sort of set the expectation that with any relationship I have, we are building a collaborative work of art of what might be true, right? Like I've kind of given myself permission to be all about, you know, the maybe. It's like, well, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. Um, and most people like it. Um, I mean, I think I'm different than a lot of, of people's friends. And I think I'm a lot different than a lot of other people on the timeline. Um, How many of these correspondences would you say you've had or currently have? Oh, I'd probably say like 75 would be the right, the right number. Wow. Well, can you maybe, um, you know, these are of course private correspondences, but can you maybe give us a sense of like the, the differences among the correspondences or like what it makes certain ones that you really like unique or something like that? Sure. I mean, it's mostly based on their interests. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've got a handful of people who I, I'd say are a place I go with like cryptocurrency criticism. Hmm. Hmm. where it's like, I think it's just a game for lonely boys and they're trying to win some kind of approval or, or status or feel okay. Um, where I think, you know, that work lies in the arts rather than in the accumulation of, of money or trying to somehow grift or strategize your way toward getting things. Um, so yeah, I mean, like it really like like depends on kind of their professional vocation and, and kind of like what I know their their feed is. Um, so yeah, I mean, critiques of management and leadership and politics, or critique of America, or critique of certain kinds of writers, right? Like the whole like tech VC Substack paid newsletter thing is something I like. And like pretty negative on and um always like find a place to like recycle my thoughts um you know there are some people i sort of have a semi-romantic or intimate relationship kind of like vibe with where i'll send them like like certain kinds of art certain like flavors of of stuff either like thoughts or or paintings or um, or photographs or something else um, that kind of like reminds me of our of our connection and is like on brand or like has like the aesthetic of like like the things that like we've shared or like the stuff that she posts. Um, so yeah, it's like I'm it's like everything I see reminds me of someone that I'm building something with. And yeah, like I said in that reply to you and Jimmy, it's like I'm always like stirring the pot. Um, like I read until I find something to either like say myself or write down myself or send to someone else. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, my, my life is mostly about self-care and like, like when I'm not at the screen, either like writing or reading or engaged in making knowledge, um, going for a walk, do an exercise, you know, shower, eat, um, and I, I sing as well. I've been working on my singing voice for like five years now. So I practice and record stuff on an app called Smule every night where I kind of meet another. I mean, it, it's almost like like Twitter, but for singing, it's actually really cool. Hmm. Um, so I've got a set of friends there as well. Can you describe, um, um, you know, I'm looking at your link tree now and there's uh, 13 different things. Uh, there's a Substack, Patreon, Tumblr, Medium, YouTube, SoundCloud, Smule, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, Spotify. And, and did I hear you correctly that earlier you were saying like everything is sort of, uh, I forget how you put it, but like building up to Twitter, like Twitter is where the main thing happens. Um, is that what you said? I don't think I said that. I mean, mm. I, I mean, I would say, I would say Twitter is like the main entry point mm. and it's like, it's a higher volume thing. Like, I mean, like, like, like that's always a book to read also, but um, I don't know. Um, the hierarchy that I've got there, I think is the right one, but like oh, the ordering that you put them in people who are very Twitter first know that that's what I put a lot of my effort into. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So t maybe you could tell me then about some of the different platforms and kind of how you tend to use them. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so yeah, Substack. Um, I started my newsletter. I called it Selfing in Progress. Um, essentially, like it was a place for me to kind of figure out what I have to say and what I'm doing, even though that's like mostly my voice everywhere. But for some reason, uh, doing it in that format, um, I don't know, kind of like puts me in, I don't know if I'm going to say puts me in solidarity with others also doing Substack, even though I'm critical of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, all I seem to be able to write is st stream of consciousness. Um, Patreon comes from a place of the, the idea that if you create what's inside of you, you'll find an audience and you'll be able to make a living from it, which I don't really believe is true. Um, cause I see all sorts of talented people all the time who are full-time creators and essentially doing what I do and maybe doing what you do. And it's like, you know, are they making 70 K a year? I doubt it. You know, who's, who's paying. Um, and I don't know if it should be paid and I think we should be able to live and follow our interests rather than work and do work that probably pollutes the planet. Um, so yeah, I mean, Patreon kind of comes from a place of, like, being skeptical of the notion of being able to do original creative work out of your own solitude and make a living, but it's like, there's no other choice. So it's kind of like a futile attempt but yet I keep making it, um, which I think good literature comes out of that. It's like, I'm writing to save my life and I know I'm not gonna make it and I know I'm fucked, but I have no other choice but to swim as hard as I can. Um, you can call it Kafka-esque. <sighs> um, Medium is an older platform, very connected to Twitter, still, um, I think there I have a lot more of like, like my psychic baggage from like 2013 and 14, which is very dear to me. I don't want to lose that baggage. But back when I thought like business and tech and VC and social media was like cool. And like, I wanted to be Don Draper and like live in New York and work in advertising, which I did. And then I found out the clients are boring and the people and the, and the people aren't that talented and aren't that interesting. Um, and so, but yeah, that's, that's still kind of got, there's like a push and pull of like, I want to succeed and win. And like, you know, capitalism is a way to like be better than other people. And like, that's what winning is. Um, it's like that battling with, you need to surrender and you need to become a monk of sorts and be very sweet and be vulnerable. And um, so, yeah, it's sort of like a place where both sides of me fight it out. Um, Tumblr may be more like romantic and literary. Like, I feel like that also started a long time ago. Um, very interested in like sweet girls blogging about their sadness. Um, and I can kind of like, put on that cloak and kind of like play that game a little bit sort of like where you can go and like be nobody um it's not very connected to my other social profiles so it's sort of like a fresh it's like a fresh start whenever i go to to tumblr and i can i don't know i mean it's it's not as professional i mean it's more confessional um So they're different and like, I don't copy paste between them. Um, but I don't know, you know, I think it would take someone else reading them to, to really see what I'm up to 
you know, like I, I may not have enough distance on myself to really be able to, to give a, a complete analysis of kind of how they're different. Hmm. Um, anything that you'd like to say about the other platforms? Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say Pinterest is a good example of just kind of what, what intrigues me about, about art and about images. Um, you know, I mean, I think so much of my, so much of my aesthetic is about this need to create. It's like, I think it was Picasso who said that like the artist only creates to get out of hell. Hmm. And so I'm very drawn to things that seem like they came out of hell and that they were created through, through a friction. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've been repinning stuff there since 2013. I think there's several thousand pieces of, of imagery there. Um, and like, I'll, I'll pull from that for blog post images and for podcast episode art. Um, but yeah, like a lot of like collage. Um, yeah. I mean, things that just like, you know, make me say like, that's me. You know, which I think is the fundamental experience of art is like, ooh, that's me. It's like that, what that person made on screen is exactly what I feel inside. And so it's sort of like a record of my taste and my interest. Um, what else? Um, I think that's all I'll say on those. Okay. Um... It seems like um, one of the main themes that I'm picking up on is sort of like a critique of capitalism and the economics in our society. Is, is that fair to say? Sure, yeah, totally. Can you talk about that and kind of summarize your views on it and maybe talk about where that comes from in your own experience? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, I mean, I, I, I almost mentioned LinkedIn as a piece of performance art um, <laughs> say more about that well yeah I mean it's been a place I mean I I feel like so much of self-presentation especially professional comes from shame and fear uh fear of not being good enough shame of not belonging um fear of being a fraud right I mean I, so much of my energy went toward trying to believe I'm good enough or worthy. And I feel like that's the subtext I, I get from so many people in their 20s who are on Twitter and trying to be something. It's like just so much self-loathing and self-devouring and self-doubt. Um, and I don't know. I think LinkedIn is a, is a way to overcome that. Um, though, I don't know. That sounds really stupid. Never mind. Um, but yeah, so the, the critique of kind of like work and money and, and what, what people do. Yeah, I mean, just like that cookie cutter formula life of I'm going to go be a this. It's not what it's about. It's not it at all. Um, that's not what's good for anybody. It's what's good for you and your bank account. But ultimately, life is not about getting safe. Life is about being in a weird place, being uncomfortable. Um, I'll say more about it later. I'll kind of let, let that build up. Um, see if we can attack that coming in edgewise later, mm -hmm. unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. um, Cause yeah, I mean, I, I like to think that I've kind of arrived at at least what's the perfect form for me of like reading and writing and thinking and being critical and trying to understand what it is to be alive and what consciousness is. Um, and I don't know, I mean, going back to, to email and going back to roles in an org chart where other selfish people are trying to look good in front of the right selfish people. It's just a waste. Of, it's just a waste of talent given the actual conditions on earth with human beings and with the planet. Um, but it's very hard to, to stand outside the institutions. It's, it's very hard to have no business card. It takes a lot of guts and the end is not always clear. 
right? I've got a lot of very well-employed friends and uh, I don't quite know what they think of me. Um, they appreciate my presence in their life, but I don't think they wanted to switch places with me. Um, but I don't want to switch places with them either. So. Uh, just a practical note, if you wouldn't mind being careful of touching the mic, because it makes a, a big sound when you scratch your beard. So. Got it. Sure. Uh, it's a, a growing edge in my own life to say things like that. So I appreciate yep. you no, receiving it. Good eye. Um, I'm curious, I want to ask about something you said earlier of, uh, you said, I seem to be unable to write anything other than stream of consciousness. Can you say more about that? Yeah. Um, well, I, I go to, to write things and the voice appears. Um, and I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think this is like my creative process is like, you just like, like, like you dump out what's there. And after that, your kind of curator publisher mind kicks in. It's like, huh, okay. Like what to do with that? Like, is that really what I believe? Um, cause I don't know. I mean, like, I think the person who writes and the person who speaks are sometimes different. Um, yeah, I mean, when I say all I can write is stream of consciousness, it's like, all I've got is my one voice and like, it's always going, it's always going here all day. It's zooming morning to night and it's sort of the voice I'm stuck with and I can't go try and be something else. Um, and I'm not trying to, to massage it into being able to have a neat Twitter bio or, or something, right? And even if I'm not a success, I mean, I'm here standing here saying, I'm only gonna be myself and I'm willing to give my life for it and I accept my fate, which I think is a cooler thing to say than most people with neat bios have to say. I think they're devoured by fear of not being good enough and they cling so hard to being coherent and legible. Whereas I sort of think that being illegible is sort of like the magic of it. Just for the, uh, anyone listening right now, your bio on Twitter is uh, a snoring emoji. <laughs> and that's it. So, uh, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Do you ever, do you ever, you said that the, the, the writing versus speaking minds are different and I, I totally know what you're talking about of like just writing what's there and then later you come back to it. But uh, do you ever edit what you write or do you, or like massage it or restructure it or anything like that? Or to what extent do you edit the things that are sort of stream of consciousness that come out of your mind? Yeah, not, not too often. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I haven't had the urge lately to um, really polish and hone things which is probably where a lot of my bitterness comes from. Like as for, you know, I mean, I follow a lot of poets and writers who, who do, and they, they submit stuff to journals and they say, I've got bylines and this and this and this, and I've got a new story out here and a new poem out here. And I, I like that for them and it's, it's good for them. And I, I sort of wonder why I, I don't. Um, a lot of times I'll like reread and kind of like skim what I've done. I mean, I really see it more as sculpture. And then I'm like building, right? Like the more that I, I write, I'd like, I build up a structure and it's both my own writing and there's links in there. And so I kind of like, I'll, I'll then like zoom through it and I'll like, my eye will catch little things. And sometimes I'll like add more on, like I'll like put another, I'll like tab, tab to, to create a space and like write a new thought. Um, but it's, it's rare that I'll like reread it word for word as if I'm a reader. Um, I may do that later. Like that may be like what I do when I'm in my forties <laughs> and beyond. Um, but yeah, right now it's just kind of pouring out of me. So I kind of feel a duty to like leave it there and like, I don't know. I'm, I'm more interested in like what I tweet and kind of going through that reading experience um, rather than my own output. 
So no, I don't really, uh, I don't really spend too much time editing it. I used to, um, I used to a lot. Cause I mean, it's true. I mean, like if you want to publish a book, you have to like read it like, like 75 times. Like you're going to be so sick of that, of that text. And I, I haven't been interested enough in what I've had to say, I guess. Like, it's very important for me to say it, but as far as what is said, I'm sort of losing faith in that it's important. Um, which I think is a healthy place to get to, where it's like, I need to speak to like, like, like to get it out. It's like a way of breathing. But as far as what it actually is, it's more important that I did it than it is what it actually is. But you know, so the process I'm, is more important to you than any particular thing that you create. I think so. Yeah, it's like making it and publishing it because like you can always go back later and edit it and turn it into something else. But like that's another set of choices It's like, well, what should this thing be? Should it be different than what it is? Why is that? Like what what's wrong with it as it is? And why should it be something else? Um, I think those were interesting questions that a job won't always make you ask is like, hmm. why should this thing be done at all? Hmm. Right. It's a lot easier just to, to obey. Right. Cause they're, I mean, like in a job, they're renting your behavior and that's the deal is you do what serves them. And that, that organization, corporation entities ends, which is usually make more money and you agree to the deal. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's impossible to live how I live. I mean, again, I'm, I'm living an impossible life that does not make sense on paper. Um, but I keep going and it's like, I'm kind of letting the world decide whether they want to keep me alive or not. It's like, well, I'm still in the game. I don't know. I mean, I mean, what do you think your work, like, like, what do you think your work is? Like, you know, being, yeah, here, I'll let you tell me here. Yeah. Why don't you, how about you tell me about you? Can you give me a break? <laughs> sure. Uh, what, what do you want to know about me? Like what my, what my work is in the world? Who, who are you and what do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm, I'm. A human being, a white male, I uh, am a spiritual person that has been influenced by many traditions, uh, largely Buddhism, but also Taoism, and there's a teacher I really like, Peace Pilgrim, that's been a major influence on me as well. Uh, I I'm currently living a lifestyle that I would say is somewhere between a monk and a layperson, probably more on the layperson side, but I do not currently have a job other than income that I create myself through various products and services that I have, uh, but largely I'm living off of savings and also generosity of others. I have a Patreon and sometimes people make donations to me as well uh, for the different things that I'm doing. Uh, and then I use that to do the things that seem best to me that are both most enjoyable to me personally and seem to be of maximum benefit to others. So that looks like um, a lot of it has to do with loving kindness meditation, which has been a very powerful form of meditation for me. I, I teach it at least once a week. I have a free event and post those recordings online. And then there's other ways that I'm doing things related to loving kindness. And then I also have this podcast where I just talk to people that I think are interesting. Um, I have a blog where I write basically summaries of things that I've learned uh, so that they're more accessible or digestible to other people. So, you know, um, if I read five or six books on something, I can summarize that into a blog post that makes that topic a little bit more accessible and navigable to someone. Um, and then I tweet a lot. Uh, I have multiple Twitter accounts and 
do different things on them, but uh, there's a lot of uh, posting about, well, different things, uh, different things that I'm doing and yeah. Yeah, I was intrigued by one of your audio messages to me a few weeks ago about Twitter alts. Mm -hmm. What's your kind of philosophy toward toward that and like why the multiple accounts? Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's see. It's interesting because I had a, I did a podcast yesterday where I described this same thing, um, but I will revisit it. It's a very interesting topic and want to share it with you as well. Um, so I'd say I have this a main account that's associated with my name and uh, is public as well, publicly accessible. And then I have several alts that are also associated with my name, but are like more increasingly private up to one that's just me, right? That's just like a journal for me. Uh, but then basically it's like close friends that are in the multiple private alts. Um, and those have sort of different themes. Like there's one that's very personal and it's just about my personal life and like things that not everybody might want to know or I might not want to share with everyone. Um, and then I also have sort of themed accounts that are more about uh, specific themes or questions or inquiries that I have that may or may not be associated with my, my name. And I'd say over time, the experience has been of like, um, I'm exploring my ability to speak about something or investigate something. And then over time that, that aspect of my personality or that way of speaking gets integrated into like the person that shows up on main. So, um, you know, I become increasingly comfortable talking about something in a way that I feel is appropriate or safe, or like, I feel good about that other people are going to feel good about. I have, I have very high standards for how I speak both in person and online. I think speech is basically has ethical consequences. So I want to speak ethically and I have very high standards mm -hmm. for that. So that's a part of it as well as like, it feels safer to express certain things in private and kind of test them and learn how to speak about them in ways that are appropriate. And then gradually that gets integrated into like, oh yeah, this is a good way to speak about this in public. Um, and I try to, I'd say in general, like if I've learned something for myself, I try to share it with other people so that it's accessible to them um, if it helps someone else. So like, yeah, I, I, I guess I'd say to take a step back, I want to remind myself of the things that I've learned. So I am my own best reader, right? Uh, in whatever I do. And then also I, my hope is that not only does that help me, but something that I've learned can be made available, made accessible to other people, right? So that it's, it's of benefit to others as well, ideally. So um, my, my ideal piece of writing would be both beneficial and enjoyable for me and then beneficial and enjoyable to others as well. What do you think gets in the way of people being kind and loving? And maybe what I'm asking is what is the nature of the struggle between light and dark and between my urge to be kind and gentle and vulnerable and interested in others and then also the urge to to thrash and to break glass and to tear things apart hmm. it seems like that question is coming from your own personal experience can you can you speak a little bit more to that about where that's coming from um well i mean like the more i kind of play with my voice and like see see what's inside me um you know, there's that meme. It's like, there are two wolves inside you. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I, I feel like I, I have access to all of my selves at once. And depending on the hour, it's sort of like a mix of, of a few different ones. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I've got, I've got rage and I'm not always sure what it's directed at. And then I've got um, the thing that wants to kind of relax and appreciate and uh, be feminine, perhaps, is the way to put it. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm always trying to 
see see what's alive for me in terms of different forces kind of mixing and uh yeah sort of like my my duty just to like write down the collision um i don't know i mean i guess like i'm not asking like if that kind of vibes with with what you think about when uh when you think about loving kindness hmm. and why it needs to be taught at all like why isn't it the default it's like what are you like working into on people when they when they come to you and they they want to meditate on mm -hmm. loving kindness it's like why is there why is there a flip side to that and what is that flip side mm. Mm. well That, those are very big questions that are both personal and uh, sort of about the human condition writ large. And I, I don't mind answering uh, the personal one, and I'm not sure to the extent to which I can speak to the, the human condition writ large. Um, and then the things that are coming to mind feel a little bit uh, like they're not uh, rising to the weight of the questions that you're asking me. Like, I don't want to give you like, like some things that are coming to mind, for example, are about like the three poisons in Buddhism, anger, greed, hatred, ha greed, hatred, and ignorance or delusion. And like, I think that's relevant and like a good model that you could look at this question with, but it's also sort of like an encyclopedia answer or something and I, that just doesn't feel <laughs> honest to what you're asking. Um, so I want to, yeah, let me just sit with that question for a minute and see what arises. Sure. Uh, yeah, let me, let me make, maybe make a very specific answer. And I don't think it'll get to all of what you're asking about, but for me, um, just recently, even today, I've been experiencing a lot of anger and uh, just about different things. It's, it's not really particularly important what I'm, the things I'm feeling angry about, they're just banal. Um, but then it's a question of like, how do I move with that? And how do I speak with it? And what is, what is moving here, right? And again, as I said earlier, I care a lot about ethics. I wanna act ethically and not hurt people. I wanna be of benefit with my life. So that's, that's something I'm aware of. I wanna, uh, move gracefully with this force, right? And um, I guess the way that I've been relating to it today is like, oh, there's this anger and it's about these different things. And what I wanna do ideally is feel it in my body and be honest with that, allow it to move freely in my body and then also discern what it's about and if anything needs to happen there. And if so, like this would be my ideal. I don't know if I'm there yet. Like use the energy from the anger in a way that's directed towards the thing that caused the anger, but without harming others and ideally like resolving the problem. So um, I guess that there's like, to me right now, at least there's signal in the anger of like something here is is not quite right or should needs to be adjusted or it needs to be spoken about or addressed. Um, and, and I, my default would be like, don't, don't mention it. Just don't feel it. Don't express it. Just bottle it up, but that doesn't work. And, um, so I'm trying to like move with it in a way that's graceful. So I guess in, maybe to zoom out a little bit, what's coming to mind is like a lot of the things that you're talking about of these two wolves or what, what not, like, I think that all of these different aspects of mind are very normal and very human and like even have benefit to them, like angers, you know, as much as it's been hard for me to work with it, it like has a benefit and a purpose and a place and a role, but then it's about how you feel it internally and how you express it externally. And like, it seems to me there are more or less skillful ways of working with these kinds of aspects of mind. Um, and like, actually with, in terms of loving kindness, maybe this bears mentioning, like, I think it's really easy for people to perceive 
love and kindness or the way that I present it in the world is like, for example, like good vibes only, like, oh, I just want to be happy and like pretend everything's fine and like just make yourself happier. And like, there's a reason that's sort of a straw man of loving kindness. Like I, I can see why it would come off that way, but that's like not what it's like for me and not what it's about. And it certainly would not be about um, ignoring or avoiding or repressing the darker aspects of like, like anger or sadness or grief or confusion or whatever else it is. Um, I think you really have to honor those internal forces and without like, yeah, without feeding them or making them bigger or harming others, like, using them, feeling them, and expressing them in a way that uh, both honors them internally and, and shifts things externally without causing damage to self or other. And that's the standard for me right now that's coming to mind. Yeah. Would you say you have any violent urges? Oh, certainly. Not frequently, but sometimes, yeah. Where do you get those out? Hmm. Or how do you, how do you alchemize them, metabolize them into something else? And then like, what is that steam that comes off of that chemical reaction? Hmm. I think doing embodied things is really good. I love dancing, for example. Uh, dancing is really good. And some of the dances that I've had that like channel that anger energy feel really good. Um, I think you can do that with basically any movement form. Uh, I, you know, the times that I've had access to like say a boxing bag feel really good, you know, that's not frequent, but quite enjoy that. Um, so I, in any case, my experience of it is like, and this is something I'm trying to do as much as possible, but like really feeling it in the body and there's a, a, an emotional tone and there's an energy to it and an aliveness. And then, yeah, like expressing that through motion in a way that's not uh, not violent or not harmful, but like really moves with it. And like, if I do that in dance, for example, like that can really shift things and and move it and shake it up that like honors that energy without like hurting someone or, or beating someone up or something like that. Mm -hmm. Who do you let's see? How do you think about reading between the internet and what we'll call either books or also, yeah. Like, how do you think about reading? Um, we'll say between books and the internet. Mm -hmm. Like what's your strategy or what's your like, like what's your like workflow hmm. for reading? Hmm. I've read a lot in my life, uh, read a lot. Uh, and I love reading, it makes me very happy love learning about things that I'm interested in. Um, it's interesting to me to notice that I do very little reading of books, at least these days. Um, I do a lot more writing and putting things out there and kind of uh, activities like projects and showing up in the world in different ways. And um, it seems to me like, I'm, I don't know, I'm really trying to honor my own intuition for what the best use of my time is and both for myself and for being a benefit in the world. And that seems to lead right now, at least to less reading than I would expect or even enjoy. Uh, where like, there's just so much creative energy and uh potency and aliveness in the projects that i'm doing that uh it feels like a better use of my time to create and put things out there and try things and do projects and so on what's your approach to uh community management what does that term mean to you hmm. uh It reminds me I, of different, what's that? No, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, at different points, I've tried to create communities like online or in person, like groups devoted to different things. Uh, 
think, yeah, how to put this. I've cultivated some principles about how to do that well, but that said, like right now, it doesn't seem so much like I'm commu cultivating community or managing community in the ways that I've done in the past of like building, say, say for example, like a Slack group or like a club or a social group of some kind. But um, one thing that I do find myself doing a lot these days is um, building projects with other people where like, um, as a simple example, I have someone that I'm working with as an illustrator for my blog. So like I write a post and she illustrates the blog posts and like that together is something that's greater than what either of us could do alone or like has a, a bigger impact than just a blog post that I would write myself at least. Um, and that's a simple example, but there are other projects that have like maybe five or six or seven people involved where they're each people, each person's bringing a different skill. And in a way that's like sort of, um, it's almost like a short term community around a specific goal and then it disbands and like those people might rehash and new connections and stuff and build a new project. But like that seems to be working better for me than like making a long running Slack channel or something like that. Hmm. Why do you ask about that? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm always interested in how other people think about um, their readers mm -hmm. and getting feedback and yeah, you know, like how to, how to, how to manage and like surf between, you know, the two dozen conversations you've got going at, at once. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, kind of like, yeah, like you said, it's like where your intuition leads you to, right? I mean, I, yeah, I find myself going back to a lot of message threads and like, like rereading. And like, anytime I like message someone, something new, I sort of find myself scrolling all the way up to the top. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, do your DMs, how, how do they look? Hmm. Like who's, who's in there and you spend a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say I spend a lot of time in DMs. Uh, um, yeah, I think this might be part of why I was really interested in connecting and what, you know, what led to that thread that I posted that connected to us. But like some of them, um, well, I'd say, I'd say, you know, some of them are like very simple of like someone asked me a question, like, you know, can I learn more about this or uh, something like that? And uh, or I ask them a question and some of them like go nowhere. It's just like a one-time thing and doesn't, doesn't really lead anywhere. Um, some of them are very just like friendly, you know, like, oh, I'm friends with this person and there's certain things that we like to talk about. And um, some of them um, have taken on really, like I started to notice at a certain point that different direct messages, you know, whether on Twitter or I, I do have a lot on Discord, for example, or Slack, like different certain threads that I have with people have started to take on a character of their own, where it's like this correspondence has certain themes and flavors and even like rules of a game sort of like not strictly written down, but there's like games we're playing together that have like shapes and sizes and intents and um, like purposes. And uh that's th those are some of the most interesting to me ones to me and i want to explore that more and more and 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 you know i think it would be that that's sort of why i want to have this conversation it seems like it could be really fun to play with you and it's like i'm not quite sure yet how to play with you and i want to learn how to do that like it seems like something really good could be possible there if we learn how to play together and that typically yeah. takes time but um yeah so that's sort of what i started to notice of like mm -hmm. If, if you if you continue to correspond and interact with someone over time, there can be a kind of complexity that evolves where there's shared understanding and like you know where the person is coming from and what they're interested in and and can engage at a level that's like higher than um, you know a simple like factual question or, or just a sure, simple yeah. emotional conversation or something. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, it's it's the people you are kind of self-actualizing with and kind of like trying to, you know, you asked me a good question at the beginning of this conversation is like, what are you trying to get out of, right? And it's like, for some reason, awareness is like a problem to be solved or something that I need to shape into something else. Um, I don't know, I mean, like this kind of goes back to like conversations versus money and like, why people do what they do and and i know i'm i'm maybe still trying to like fight the urge to be some sort of self-help entrepreneur Hmm. um or yeah i don't know um i know money bothers me um but um I don't know. What else? What else can I can I tell you? What else do you want to hear or uh, riff on? Or can I help you with anything that you're you're in the middle of trying to unpack for yourself? Hmm. Uh, well, one one question that's sort of adjacent to what we're talking about now is, uh, and, and we've talked about this a little bit before in direct messages. But do you ever like sort of cross post something from a direct message to someone? to another more public channel? Sometimes. Um, I'll, I'll sometimes like do like a, like a screen grab. Um, mm-hmm. like, but often what I'll do, I mean, I mean, I think DMs are like an exploratory space where like if I say something that like catches fire, I might just go right in to writing something in public about it. Um, so in that sense, one can be kindling for another. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I feel like I'm always kind of like, like dancing between private and public and like trying to figure out what I have to make visible and then making it visible. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, that's sort of like my like religion is like making the unknown known and like going from the kind of cloudy mystery of like rage and wonder and like pinning that down in words and stringing it out and putting it there and then keeping going. Um, so I don't think much about audience. I I think a lot more about feeling and about like a confluence of forces and of like being ready to kind of receive the words as they come. Um, but I'm not sure they answered your question or I forgot what the question was. Oh, I think you answered it. Um, do you, and this is also something we've circled around before in DMs, but for me, I imagine that like if I was writing these different correspondences to a lot of people and there was just a lot there and some of them were like really beautiful and impactful that I would feel some kind of like grief mm. around not uh, that not being public or, or not being available to a wider audience. And I'm curious how you think about that. Yeah, well, I think that... Um people worry a lot about publishing and a lot about making things public. Whereas I think it's good to make beautiful things. And, you know, those correspondences can always be, can always be uh, reread and, you know, they're going to live on the server forever, right? Our DMS will be around in a hundred years and maybe a thousand years. Um, And we don't know who the audience will be, right? It might be more useful for people who come one or two or three generations after us. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much in public right now. I think it's a very confused time in media when everybody's got a camera, everybody's got a keyboard, everybody is in either financial or emotional or psychological pain. And they just turn their camera on and just start pouring out their trauma or their maybes or their, oh my God, it's so weird, you know, being... 22 in you know the world and it's like everyone's just like vomiting everywhere and making something public is no longer like super terribly important because there's so much that's public right there's so many books that were published this year by small presses that all were that are all worth reading you know there, there's more there's more published every day than can be read in a lifetime um so there's no rush to make things public I don't think. Um, 
I think getting it down in words in an artifact is the thing. And it's like, I don't know. I think a lot of people try to publish too soon. Um, I've kind of made publishing meaningless in a sense, like the more fearless I become, the more I can just keep pouring stuff into the keyboard. And I think that's like all that matters. Like, like no matter where it is, it's like, I can do no wrong. I can make like, there's no mistakes. You can't make a mistake. I think I've learned that about life. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, it's good if, you know, my DM conversations seem like they're aching to be made public. It means that I'm writing good shit. It means that I'm writing well, um, which is the goal, right? There is no being a writer. There's only writing. And it's like, well, if you're going to be a good writer, guess what? You need to write well, a lot, all the time. So it's like, this was the only point of arrival, right? Like maybe this is success, right? Maybe even though I've gone on and on about how I'm not successful, it's like, well, I wake up and I write well and I don't give a fuck what else happens. The walls could fall down around me. I don't care. I will be sending the most obscure DM to a person who I don't even know because it feels right. <laughs> and if I die that way, then great. Here's my person, you know, here's my stack of papers, write my Wikipedia page and let it sit there for hundreds of years. Peace. I had a good time. <laughs> um, and I mean, I think that's like a good point to get to where it's like death is kind of meaningless. And I feel like I've kind of gotten there. Um, you know, I'm not living for later. You know, I don't really have a five-year plan. I have a five-hour plan and I kind of just like live there. Um, what does you can't make a mistake mean? uh that everything's material and that you actually don't have as much control as you think um you know fate versus free will rem uh, remains an interesting thing um i mean i think you need to follow your, your intuition to the end and even if it seems like the wrong thing that you made a mistake it'll actually turn out that that was material and that you needed to to take that step to then see what it was um by material um, do you mean like relevant and pertinent rather than like matter yes <laughs> yes yeah material as in like let's look back at you know thoughts from three days ago it's like mm -hmm. okay this is now material right you know the stuff i wrote in the middle of the night last night that was you know full of rage and anguish it's like okay i can come i can come back to the sanity of my my creative process today and be like, Ooh, like, look at that. Someone had a nervous breakdown last night. Let's see. What, let's see if we can use this material and turn it into something. Um, oh, so you so mean yeah. like it's the, it's the, it's like the basis for creative work. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So if, would you, is it fair? Um, uh, I asked, Jimmy, who connected us, if he had any questions for you, and he said, uh, let, "Let me pull this up. Actually, let me let me quote it verbatim. I want to sure. honor the this question." Uh, let's see, so he said, "What are the uses?" Uh, this is not verbatim. I'm paraphrasing here. What are the uses and costs of mania and love? <laughs> oh, Jimmy, I love you. Um, the uses and costs of mania and love. Well, I think, I think mania um, gets you to the purely both human and also transcendental place. Um, I think if you sink into your mania and you really indulge in that urge to like shake the screen or like break something like that if you let yourself feel that and let it come through you you'll see what unites you to anyone who's ever been alive um and i think that's useful i mean i think i think being able to connect your personal to the universal i think is really what being a creative person is about certainly what writing is about certainly what acting or photography are about i think any of the arts um is about knowing that you are like everybody else while also being completely yourself and unique. Um, 
the costs of mania, um, you become unemployable. Um, you're lonely because you're always kind of lost in your own taste and your own like judgment of your own voice. Um, I'd say those are the main costs. Um, when you really follow your own groove, you kind of live in a world of your own and uh, your mind becomes your workplace and yourself becomes your endless project. And um, yeah, you sort of live in a world of your own creation, um, which makes you lonely. But I mean, I think the people who do really interesting creative work are sort of possessed and obsessed in that way. And uh, yeah, you know, their, their personal life suffers, their health suffers, their money situation suffers. But, you know, there's a lot of benefits to it as well. Um, the the uses and costs of love. Wow. Um, well, you lose yourself, right? You, you realize that your private world gets obliterated and you realize that someone else is just as real as you are. And so kind of like the, the walls of perception is kind of like burst and like fly away. Um, and you realize that work won't and can't save you and hmm. uses of love well that certainly enables you to relate to other people and to understand community understand family which is a term i'm kind of becoming more and more distant from um costs of love you become locked on one idea, you become locked on to an image, you start to live in the past. Um, you idealize love and really that person is new every day, just like you are. Um, and yeah, you realize that it's two people trying to, to get pleasure from the same place and trying to, to make reality fit and, and ideal and uh, it's painful. It's painful when you don't get what you want. It's painful when things don't seem to work out, uh, when you just have an infinite hunger that can't be quenched. Um, it hurts, it's, it's humbling. Um, it's humiliating. Uh, it kind of turns you inside out, makes you very pathetic, makes you like a baby. Um, which again, I think the creative person is like ready for. It's like you're, you're ready to be, to be returned to this very basic animal state this like baby state where it's like, that's like the most authentic place to, to create and to listen from because everyone's still a baby. Right. I mean, I think adults are just grown babies. Um, so yeah, the costs of love. Yeah. Complete humiliation and annihilation and a complete loss of everything you thought you understood about what it meant to be a person, what it meant to be you, everything you thought you wanted, where you thought you wanted to go. Um, what you thought you wanted to have, what you thought you could have, when really life and love is, it's not a, it's not a thing to have. It's a thing to, to be, and it's a thing to let go of. Um, if that makes sense, it wasn't too much of a ramble. Yeah, well, we'll I, I enjoyed it. We'll see what Jimmy thinks of that part, uh, his question. Uh, yeah. Um, Huh. I, there, yeah, there's a few, a few sort of questions I want to ask that have sort of come up of um, maybe one that would be good to circle back to is um, what you mentioned, amongst other things, that your creative work and process can be a kind of therapy for you. Can you speak more to that? Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I'm like being gnawed from both sides by the voice. And it's like my job to, to give it space and to kind of like let it sing out through 
whatever I am, you know, through my online uh, platform, um, you know, using the keyboard that I've got. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think for anyone who is setting themselves up as an author or an artist, and it's like, I'm going to create my individual work and that's going to be what my work is. That's my job. I mean, I think work and therapy go, go together. I mean, cause you're, you're trying to endure your own self and your own consciousness and being aware. Um, so I think work is therapy. Um, I mean, I think it's one and the same, you know, it's, it's trying to figure out what's wrong. It's like, well, what's, what's the problem, right? Why does my mind go immediately to wanting there to be a problem rather than my day is all about loving kindness and gratitude and sweetness and having fun and feeling good? Um, yeah, it's like, why, why do I make myself so miserable? And what's the way out of that? It's like, what am I supposed to be learning from the thoughts in my head? And can you really just let them pass? Um, cause yeah, I mean, I think, I think if you're not tortured or bothered, there's no reason to make art or do anything, right. You may as well just go get a job and check your email or go like watch Netflix. Um, I mean, I, I think if you're really bothered by something that you can't forget something that won't go away, you have to deal with it. And you either are tortured by something or you're not. And uh, I don't know. I've sort of lost touch with, with people who aren't profoundly bothered by something and <laughs> who are just like making cute commentary about whatever. It's like, if you don't think the world's on fire, I don't know what we have to say to each other. <laughs> like if, if reality is not an emergency to you, I don't know how we can relate um but i don't know i mean i think i'm i'm probably drawn to people who give me permission to feel the way that i feel right people who are idealistic and broken and are up at their limit and up at their edge um and who want to keep living there and who insist on being there and who can't somehow do the safe strategic thing to make their life okay and those who eventually re those who eventually eventually realize like my job is to not be okay and to to deal with not being okay and to be loud about not being okay and to not stop expressing it until things change um and if nothing changes then i guess we just keep not being okay um, so yeah, I mean, I think therapy and choosing what to do next are very intertwined, right? In a sense, it's like, who's going to save me, right? What's, what's my safety net? What's, what's my, what does it mean to win and to be good and to be okay? What do I need to do today? What do I need to do next? Do I need to do anything or can I just sit here? But then of course you start kind of like, you know, getting the itch to go do something. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not driven by emails. I'm not driven by calendars. I'm not driven by uh, budgets or by um, corporate mission statements or anything. Um, I'm motivated by my own unrest. And so dealing with my unrest is the work I have to do. And, and so that is therapy. Um, but I think it's also the keyhole through which other people are trying to do their thing as well. So the more I understand that keyhole, the more prepared I am to be able to, to comment on and respond to and engage with, with their stuff, right? It's sort of a relief to be an audience member. It's sort of a relief to, to be able to 
see others work and comment on it, right? Because I know how much it means to me when someone actually reads what I have to say and says something clearly about it. It's, it's very, it's very rare. You know, I'm sort of surprised how few readers I seem to have given how much time I spend writing. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that answers the question of, you know, how work and therapy are related. Mm -hmm. I'd say so. Um, what would you say, like within your creative process and your writing and the work that you're doing, what would you say are the like growth edges of what you're doing? Well, I would, I would say I'm, I'm very bad at like asking for help. I'm very bad at being helped. I feel like I'm always like two steps away from figuring the whole thing out. And like, finally it was like, Oh, like that's what I should do. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't really know what to show people. Like I, I really don't know how to, how to build a bridge between where I am and other people, which is probably the source of my misery. Um, my growth edges. Yeah, I mean, maybe I just need to like, like delete so much writing and start over, like start over from, start over from the beginning. Um, I feel like the more I delete, the better I feel. Um, so yeah, I mean, my, my, my growth edge may be to really believe my own medicine, which is like, it's always day one. You're always starting over at the beginning. Um, and yeah, I mean, if, I mean, I think what I'm doing online is not really working. I think the writing I'm putting out, it's not really working. Um, so I, I need to have the guts to delete it all and start over. And from there, decide what I really have to say. And if I don't have... And if I don't feel a need to tell my story or to make a statue of whatever I am, then I should go do something else. Maybe just, you know, be a reader for other people, right? Go, go be an editor, go help other people do their thing. Um, See, so I don't know. I, I feel very uncomfortable in my current understanding of what my job even is. Um, and I don't think it's going very well. What would working um, look like? I guess wanting to get my writing right and like having a set of things I'd like to actually get down um, rather than everything being a, a rage of stream of consciousness that goes in and out of different subjects that people can ignore and it, and it never makes an impact because it's just like a violent wind that comes in and out and it doesn't really do anything um, and it doesn't stick, right? Like. I don't know, like I need, I need to decide who I am and what I have to say. And I need to get, I need to, to put it down. And I guess like be, be more organized. I don't know. Hmm. It's like, it's like you need to like start over. Hmm. Is this a common feeling for you or something that's just current right now in this conversation? No, I mean, it's, it's kind of been the theme of the last like couple of years. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like I'm talented and I work hard mm -hmm. and yet it's, it doesn't seem to, to do anything. Um, and so it's like, well, if I'm going to make this the main thing, I, I need to do something, something else. Like I, I need to find a way to make it work. Um, and, and, and I don't know what making it work is like, do I need it to be able to, to be my wild self and also be its representative, right? Like some people say that if you're a writer, you, spend 10% of the time writing and 90% of the time doing admin work and like getting it seen and sending it to the right person. Like, do I need to do more email? Do I need to, to work on my reputation? Right. I don't even like my name. I don't even like my reputation. I don't even know who I want to be. So I, I, I don't really like being Jeff Lewis. I don't even think I'm that person anymore. So I like need to like find a new name. 
Mm. Maybe I need to, yeah, just like come up with a new name, like a new, a new persona, mm. a new reputation, a new self. Um, I don't like my old one. I'm mm. tired of it. Um, too much yeah. psychic baggage. It's in the past. I don't know if I can get, I'm not sure I can move forward being Jeff Lewis anymore. I don't know who that is anymore. At least over here from hearing you talk, uh, there seem to be like two practical issues that are rising up. Like, I don't know, you're talking now about like having a voice and, and who you want to show up and what you want to say. And that makes sense. But there's sort of like two that seem in the air of like, one, just practically, do you have enough money to support yourself and like eat and, you know, not be borrowing money or be at a loss and or things like that. And then Another is like, and I don't know how much you value this, but to me, at least if I was making writing the basis of my work and my life, I would want people to read what I write and like be accessible to readers and like find readers that resonate with what I'm writing. And from that perspective with that one, like just, just over here, it looks to me like stream of consciousness creates really, and also private correspondences create like really, really beautiful things. I, it seems like you have just a tremendous wealth of beautiful writing that's incredible and has helped you personally and helped whoever's reading it. But like, I would wanna make that like accessible to more people so that they could read it and dive in and find the treasure wow. that's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, haven't, I haven't turned my uh, insistence on creative freedom all the time into, a living wage, mm -hmm. um, but I also don't want to have to. And mm -hmm. I think I'm just like ready to like, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm just going to cling to my privacy and just like to be left alone. And if the world doesn't change, then it'll just eat me up mm -hmm. and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like a stupid thing to say. And like, it's kind of like me throwing away my life but I don't know. I'm sort of like burned out on like trying to like navigate my way to survival. Like I'm just kind of like burned out on like being innovative and, and like strategic because mm -hmm. it doesn't interest me. Um, I'd, I'd rather be unknown to myself and um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, with my correspondences, it's like, that's my, in a sense, my like, like my public work um yeah the whole like st strategic like get myself read self-publishing it's just it, it turns me off i don't know why mm -hmm. it bores me to tears i see other people doing it it bores me to tears because that's for me it's it's selfish and it's it's weak um yeah i don't know I'm, I'm still figuring out how I need to see myself in order to, to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm down to my last year of life. I can't tell. Um, Cause I don't want to change, right? It's evolution. It's like, I don't want to change. And so those are the kind of organisms that die. And I don't know. I've sort of gotten used to my way of operating of, I'm going to read and write what I want, completely disconnected from strategy. I'm going to do whatever I want that feels good. And if I die in this hole, then I die in this hole. And I don't know, that, that feels alive to me. Like defending that way of life feels alive to me. And that's where a lot of my strength is, is I'm going to defend this way of life. I'm going to not find a way to make a living out of it. I'm going to do what I need, what I feel like doing. And if that's self-destructive and the death drive, then so be it. Death sounds like an adventure I'm ready for. How about that? Mm. Here's a different question. Say, say someone is uh, listening to this and they would like to start one of these correspondences with you. Uh, what, what would you tell someone that's interested in that, that like, what makes for a good correspondence and, and how do you, uh, mm. what would you tell someone who's just getting started talking to you in this way? Mm. Mm. 
Um, I would say to empty your mind and to almost like start off by destroying your reputation and um, write, like tweet to, to cast off the poisons in you to, to get down to your most, like as far as you can like drill into yourself with your voice and like clearing the debris out, which I think is like a lot of what tweeting for me is, is like clearing, clearing the debris to like get down to the center. Um, so I'd say that's a start. And that's like what I admire in someone's writing is them trying to, to get to the bottom of, of their experience. Um, you know, writing to survive, not writing to be read. I'm very bored by people who are clearly writing to be read. Their fucking boring vanilla newsletters are just trash and air pollution. Um, and I mean, as far as starting a correspondence with me, I mean, I think anything that I've ever written is, is fair game. Like if someone sends me a tweet of mine and has thoughts on it, like wonderful. Um, I can always riff on that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think conversation is a place where we both disappear. And I think it's a place where we, where me and the other person, so me and you in this case, we, we both get to being in the universal voice together. And I think it's good practice to revisit that. Um, you know, yeah, the truth that separateness really is an illusion. And we are both the same self. And it's a weird truth to have to, to deal with and to have to look out at the world with, because everywhere we are separated in different boxes and compartments and roles, but underneath we're all the same person. Um, does that answer the question? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. Is there anything that is related to this conversation or anything that we've talked about that you would like to say more about either from your own perspective or talk more about? No, I think you've worn me out pretty good. Um, no, you, you're, you're making me kind of question my, my faith and yeah, it's like, what good am I for others? Right. I mean, is it enough that I'm just like a whirlwind at the center of myself kind of spinning out stuff? I don't know. Um, I don't know, but you know, I mean, I've, I've learned that, you know, being an entrepreneur, you can call myself that, even though I don't really sell anything. Um, being one is sort of learning how to stomach the feeling that everything is falling apart yet coming together at the same time. I sort of feel like that's the case. Like, I'm, I'm glad that what I'm saying now is like, I feel like I'm like about to break apart at the middle, like standing on my last leg down to my dying breath, rather than like, oh, I'm so confident I've done this. And I think this, and I think this, and here's this and this, like those conversations usually bore me to death. Um, and it's like, we don't need any more successful people. I think people who are unsettled are a lot more useful. So like, I think I'm useful being unsettled and, and that me being, it, being unstable and kind of having to create myself moment by moment, I think I'm more useful that way than if I'm comfortable and I know what my role is and know what my job is. But I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling, but I mean, that's, that's sort of what I do is I kind of keep discovering what's there and putting it in a different post and then moving along to the next thing. And uh, I mean, eventually the years get shorter. Um, I think I'm getting there now where it's like, I scroll back to stuff from February or stuff from last year. And it's like, oh damn, like it's only been a year. Like, like it's already been a year since I wrote that. Um, so I don't know, I guess I should write more stuff. For some reason, writing always seems like, like the way out of everything. And that uh, strategy doesn't really work for me. Um, if I just kind of keep burrowing through 
and tunneling through and th throwing words out and clearing the debris, I'll find my way through. And like, even if I don't know how it's going to sell or who's going to pay or who's even going to be there to read it. Um, but I think that's, you know, being a poet, you have to take a sacrificial flight to the sun. So I think that's, that's what I do. Um, and it's not easy and it's not comfortable and it's not always fun. You know, I, I think the me of five or seven years ago would, would be, would be happy to see me recording this now because it very much is the artistic temperament. Um, so I don't know. I, I, hopefully I've, uh, I've impressed my younger self. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a lot of my younger self who are out there today. And so I'm sort of out here like working for them as well. Right. Like I can always turn away from my own issues and like keep those like on the stove over there. And then I can turn my full attention to how they're doing and I can, and I can imagine what they're going through from the, from the position they're in. So it's like, even if I'm like an emergency, which I think like I always am, um, I can always like push pause on that and like turn back to someone else and use everything that I've learned in my being an emergency to be a good seer of what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And again, turn back to that like offensive coordinator role and sort of helping them get through their own being an emergency. Um, but yeah, I mean, no one's got the answer of how to be themselves and be okay, right? We've only ever been able to make money by comporting to others' behavior. So, you know, being original, it, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't really spend too much time thinking about how to monetize myself. I'm kind of waiting for someone else to come along and do it. And if they never do, then they never do. And I'll be a cautionary tale and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, you know, I've only read so much of what you've written and uh, had this conversation with you and talked so much with you in DMs, but I, I like the thing you're pointing to and the example that you set catalyzes something for me that uh, is relevant to my own work. And I think maybe, you know, we're coming from different places and have different values and goals and so on. But the, the example that you set has been very uh, uh, potent for me or like fruitful and it's, it's stewing. And I'm curious to see where it goes, if only to, you know, a continued correspondence with you. And I suspect others might be interested in corresponding with you as well, or reading what you've written or diving in. So I would hope that that comes out of this conversation and um, yeah. And it, yeah. Uh, yeah. In any case, I really thank you for your time and for having this conversation with me. It's been very interesting and fruitful for yeah. me, and I hope it has been for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this was a good uh, therapy session and a good, I mean, my writing can only be as good as I am speaking, right? It's like, so this was a good productive day of like, sit down and actually talk about what you do and what you believe and who you are. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, I discovered some, some, some messy stuff in there uh, about what I really am. So you've, you've helped me uncover what, I, what are my growth areas uh, mm -hmm. and also what I think my strengths and my, my convictions are. Um, so no, this has been very, very clarifying. You let me talk a lot, which I, which I appreciate. I hope it wasn't boring um, no, no, or, or, or too self-indulgent. Mm -hmm. um, Cause yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're all out here trying to figure out what our role is. Um, so yeah, happy to, to kind of lead the way and kind of make a trail where there isn't one uh, for anyone who has a voice that's kind of in their head all the time and they need to, to honor it or else it's going to swallow them alive. So um, yeah, I'm always glad to, to meet other people who are, are doing that as well. Um, Cause yeah, I think we are our only hope and it's like the only success is, you know, being in league with the others and kind of continuing to do the impossible. Cause like you, you never really arrive. I think you just kind of keep marching. 
Beautiful. So thank you, Nadim. Yeah, thank you so much for this conversation, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely, Hashim. Thank you.